It's good to gather for worship once again at the start of Christian Aid Week. I think one thing that helps us to keep going through this long period of living apart is the number of ways people are finding to stay in touch remotely. I have a sense of how many phone calls, emails, on-screen gatherings and conversations from a safe distance are going on. That's good. We need these connections because we're human beings and we're lost without one another. Even though the nation couldn't hold a large-scale event marking the end of the war in Europe 75 years ago, as the Queen said in her VE Day at broadcast, our streets are not empty, they're filled with the love and care that we have for each other. Worship can renew our relationship with God and re-energises our sharing of God's love and care with neighbours near and far. Our call to worship today is from Psalm 31. I come to you, Lord, for protection. Never let me be defeated. You are a righteous God. Save me, I pray. Hear me. Save me now. Be my refuge to protect me. My defence to save me. You are my refuge and defence. Guide me and lead me as you have promised. Keep me safe from the trap that has been set for me. Shelter me from danger. I place myself in your care. You will save me, Lord. You are a faithful God. I am always in your care. Save me from my enemies. From those who persecute me. Look on your servant with kindness. Save me in your constant love. Our first hymn today is Longing for Light, We Wait in Darkness.
Let us pray. Help us to put our trust in you, creator God, maker of heaven and earth, within and beyond time, giver of life. Help us to put our trust in you, Jesus, our saviour and friend, companion on life's journey, unexpected guest at our table, God's only son. Help us to put our trust in you, God the Holy Spirit, placing new ideas in our minds, restoring hope to our hearts, unseen presence within and between us. Give us eyes to see our lives as you see them, loving God. Give us insight to recognise the faults we so easily miss in ourselves, but are so quick to spot and name unhelpfully in others. Give us grace to be honest and open about our mistakes, before you, with one another and in the way we talk to ourselves. And when we've taken stock of all that is wrong, all that needs to change, may we have the strength and courage to lay these burdens down before you, so that you can take away our sin, restore our relationships and refresh us heart, mind, body and soul. We celebrate God's forgiving, renewing love and forgiveness as we say the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our reading today is from John's Gospel, chapter 14, starting to read at verse 1 and I'm reading from Alan Dale's New World Translation. Stop worrying, said Jesus. Keep trusting God and keep trusting me. There are many different places in my father's home for people to live. I would have told you long ago if this was not true. I'm going away now to make sure there is a place for you. Then I shall be back again to welcome you into my home, where we shall always be together. You know my direction and my road, he added. We don't know where you're going, sir, said Thomas. How can we know the road? You know me, what I am and how I live, said Jesus. I am the road. The end of the road is to know God as Father. To help people to know God as Father has been my work and mine alone. If you had known me as I really am, you would have known God as Father. From now on you know him as Father, you have seen him for yourselves. Sir, said Philip, help us to know God as Father, that's all we need. We've been friends together for a long time, said Jesus. Don't you know me yet, Philip? He who has seen what I really am has seen the Father. Why do you keep on saying, help us to see God as Father? Don't you, but I le don't you believe that I live in the Father? and the Father lives in me. I don't just invent the words I speak. God the Father is living in me and at work in me. You must trust me at this point if you don't understand. My words, I live in the Father, and the Father lives in me, are the plain truth. If you find this difficult to believe, look at my whole life and trust me for what I do. Believe me, the man who trusts me will be able to live as I live. Indeed, he will be able to do much more than I can do here, because I am going to the Father. Remember, I will do whatever you ask, if you ask in my name. When I first saw West Side Story, it was as the two lovers, Tony and Maria, sang their duet, There's a Place for Us, that I started to well up. 
The musical is based on Romeo and Juliet, so I knew the ending couldn't be happy. Even so, I hope that their longing for somewhere with peace and quiet and open air could be more than a dream. Desire to be in a place that's calm, safe and healthy is embedded in us all. We hope we'll be there with those we love most. And when we're low and fearful, the longing for such a place gets deeper. The uncertainty the whole world is living through now gives us a fair amount in common with those first anxious disciples whom Jesus gently chides to stop worrying in today's reading. They've not had an easy time, to be fair. Within minutes, they've gone from the extraordinary experience of having their feet washed by their teacher to seeing Judas depart into the night to betray Jesus. They've also just heard Jesus tell Peter he'll deny him soon, three times. Anyone could be excused for worrying about the future at such a moment. Jesus knows they're troubled. Of course he does. He's their friend and companion who's been with them night and day for three years. There's nothing about them that he doesn't know. He's reassuring them that despite betrayal and denial from some of them, Nothing will undermine his love for his closest friends or his faithfulness to the relationship they've shared. There will always be room for them in God's house, Jesus says. This is God's assurance of welcome for all of us, rather like that all travellers in the time of Jesus relied on. It was usual to expect hospitality from strangers in any town or village you pass through the offer of somewhere to put your head down and sleep safely. Jesus wants the disciples to know that he will remain their abiding place, their safe space, even though his death is approaching. He foresees they may mistake the end of his life for the end of their relationship, but he wants them to know that nothing brings an end to God's love or desire to be near us. Our ongoing spiritual relationship with God through Jesus is the place where we'll always find shelter, food, water, rest and renewal, and a home in God's heart. If we think we are finding life stressful during this pandemic, then we do well to expand our imaginations to those who have very few resources to call on. How must it feel to be stuck in a small flat in a high-rise block, with several children to care for and very little money? What if your life's been reduced to a few square yards of space, crammed into a hostel room, or sleeping on a friend's sofa, or forced into a tent or sleeping bag with just the possessions you can carry? There were pitiful scenes on the news a few nights ago of homeless people sleeping on the New York subway, being turned out into the night because, very understandably, the authorities needed to clean the subway cars. Some accepted the shelter they were offered by homelessness workers. Others didn't. And one man was pictured shuffling away into the night with his dishevelled rucksack and trolley of meagre possessions. This year, the Christian Aid Week appeal focuses on the needs of the poorest countries in the world as they respond to the crisis caused by COVID-19. By comparison with us, these nations have none of the resources and reserves they need. For instance, Haiti in the Caribbean is the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. Its hospitals have fewer than 60 ventilators available for the health needs of more than 11 million people. Without forgetting the pain and suffering around us in wealthy nations, we can also help Christian Aid to support our suffering sisters and brothers around the world in the challenges they face now. That's how we show others that we're followers of Jesus, whose concern was and is always for the least and the lost. Trust me for what I do, Jesus tells Philip in that upper room in Jerusalem. The disciples' feet are washed and clean as they hear those words. That's the example Jesus sets for them and for us, to serve others as he has served us, showing them God's love as we do so.
we bring our prayers for the church and for the world. God of hope and justice, we hold before you the needs of your children everywhere, especially those all over the world and in this country whose lives are in a downward spiral of redundancy, broken relationships, homelessness, hunger, destitution and loss of dignity. We pray for families holding together against the odds, above all those in overcrowded refugee camps, shanty towns and illegal settlements in the Middle East, Africa, Asia and Latin America, struggling daily to have clean hands, regular meals and hope for the future. We pray for charity workers and volunteers everywhere, those whose causes are easily forgotten in the midst of so much need, asking for grace that our prayers may include those we do not see as much as those who are close to our hearts. We pray for leaders in local councils and national governments, in hospitals, schools, transport, commerce and banking around the world. May we all be open to your spirit, loving God, calling us to open up new channels of support and dialogue inviting us to draw strength from one another and from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn is There's a Spirit in the Air. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. May the rains fall softly upon your fields until we meet again. May God hold you 
in the hollow of his hand. Amen.